Good afternoon. Today I'll be talking about um, the complete exosome workforce solution that we've developed, um, taking you from isolation of the exosomes all the way um, to characterization of them and their cargo. Um, so why work with exosomes? Um, as we were looking to expand into this area, um, there were three things that kind of attracted us to exosomes in general. Um, the first being that they have a diverse set of functions, um, one of them being cellular communication. Um, the second, um, through this diverse set of functions, they're also starting to become more and more important to disease research, as many of the talks here have shown, um, with great potential for diagnostics and for therapeutics. Um, and third, and more kind of key to me at least, is uh, research has shown as much of the um, extracellular nucleic acid and protein in body fluids is found in uh, um, exosomes, um, which could be very important. This cargo, nucleic acid and protein, could contain a lot of important information relevant to disease um, and other types of research. So getting into the field of exosomes, um, trying to develop the workflow to work with them, the first thing you want to do is to be able to actually to get them, to isolate them or um, extract them from your sample. Um, and you're thinking, you know, why is this important? Um, traditionally, you know, if you wanted to look at nucleic acid and proteins, you just isolate from the entire sample. Um, and this works pretty well. However, um, if you're looking for rare targets, um, especially those that might be found in exosomes, doing this, you can create a lot of potential background of a nucleic acid protein you don't, aren't looking for, hiding your, your target of interest. So the best way to do this is to extract your exosomes, isolate them, concentrate them. That way you have a be able to do a more sensitive detection um, for your nucleic acid and protein. In addition, pull them out and be able to look at the total exosome fraction, but also subpopulations, um, which the last talk demonstrated can be very important. Um, so there is a method in place to, ice, to extract, isolate, concentrate um, exosomes, ultracentrifugation, um, used very extensively, um, kind of the gold standard method. Um, it has a lot of pros. It's a proven method. Many people use it. Produces clean preps. Works for multiple sample types and also um, has been shown to be useful in downstream analysis, RNA, um, real-time PCR, um, sequencing, and like that. However, um, as mentioned before, it does have several drawbacks, um, uh, one of which being the uh, high amount of um, time it takes to complete these um, ultracentrifugation purifications as well as um, the amount of labor, you know especially happy more sophisticated <laughs> protocol with, um, as one pictured here, with sucrose gradients um, or multiple spins and washes or filtration. Um, another drawback is yield can be very low, um, especially, you know, many of you have tried it, you have an invisible pellet and it's very easy to lose that pellet. I've done mm -hmm. it many times. Um, mm -hmm. So you can lose your pellet, yield can be low. Um, Another drawback, it's not scalable. I mentioned before, um, as many of the talks so far have demonstrated, the importance of these tiny little vesicles and diagnostic therapeutics is becoming more, more apparent and more important. And in working in those areas, um, oftentimes you'll have to work with many samples. So ultracentrifugation in that respect also um, just isn't practical. So we decided to uh, looking for exosomes to try to um, find an easier method. Um, much quicker, easier, um, something you could actually expand the number of samples. And after trying many technologies, um, what we decided worked the best for us was a precipitation method using um, a specialized polymer-based reagent that we developed. Um, and the benefit, there are several benefits over ultracentrifugation. Um, first, um, this indicates, this is your basic protocol right here. Very simple, five steps. Um, takes you know, about 30 minutes of hands-on time, and for some of the samples, you can have your exosomes in less than three hours. Um, a high bit, much improved over ultracentrifugation, which can take at least half a day, or sometimes several days. So with this um, development of this protocol, um, and the development of um, two reagents um, for two specific body fluids, um, cell culture media and serum, um, and the benefits for these reagents, uh, you can maximize your recovery of your total exosome fraction, pull down um, everything, the exosome size. It's very easy, simple protocol, um, takes very little time. Um, and then something we really liked and wanted to capitalize on was flexibility. Um, so using these reagents to isolate your exosomes, you're able to take them and then 
further them into different types of characterization, or all of them. For instance, if you're just interested in RNA, just go through RNA isolation or protein analysis. Or you can take your exosome fraction and then further, um, further process it for looking at the subpopulations, whether using uh, magnetic beads conjugated to a specific antibody um, or another type of method. So it provides a lot of flexibility in how you're able to look at your exosomes um, now that you've got them. Um, so one way of characterization, of course, is RNA, and we um, developed a kit to go along with that. Um, so now I'm going to present some data of how we've um, taken our isolated exosomes and then characterized them in their cardio, um, following through with our workflow. So first, um, as many of you do, you look at the nanosite trying to, uh, here we're looking at the size and concentration of the exosomes, um, looking at two different sample types, um, HeLa cell culture media as well as human blood serum. Um, so you see on the left, we have the results from using exosome isolation with our reagent. And then on the left, from ultracentrifugation, which um, we normally use as a control to make sure um, we're recovering what we should be. I mean, here you can see, um, based on the nanosite, you're getting particles less than 300 nanometers, with the majority of them falling into the 30 to 150 nanometer range, which is where exosomes fall. Um, and as you can see, for both the reagent and ultracentrifugation, you're getting very similar results. Um, so you're able to, good um, showing that you are collecting exosomes as you would expect from the standard, the gold standard procedure. Um, in addition to characterizing just the size and amount of exosomes, you also want to look at the cargo. Um, here we're actually looking at RNA, one of the cargos contained in exosomes, um, specifically real-time PCR for message RNA um, as well as microRNA. Um, again, we're looking at serum and cell culture media. Um, again, making the comparison to between the reagent ultracentrifugation. And what you see again, um, you are able to uh, visualize that the exosomes contain at least HeLa cell culture media, message RNA, um, and then um, the range of microRNAs and then ribosomal RNA um, in your sample. Um, and the expression pattern between the two different methods is very similar. Um, although you do see a slight improvement for the reagent, which um, we've seen is the reagent usually allows a higher recovery of exosomes, which is why. <coughs> so continuing on, um, another way to characterize is through protein. Um, and so here we're actually looking at surface protein, um, CD63, pretty common surface marker for exosomes. Um, again, comparing the two methods, the two uh, sample types. And as you can see, um, both methods give you um, clean, perhaps, of ex clean isolations of exosomes and a very strong detection of the CD63 marker. So we've looked at RNA, looked at protein, um, good characterization, but as we move more into the age of sequencing um, and expand out the, uh, the, youth, the um, what you can sequence, what people are interested to sequence, um, exosomes, of course, are a natural um, segue into that. So here, um, we also wanted to look at that and look deeper into the RNA. Um, you know, real-time PCR is great if you have known targets, but if you're not quite sure what's there, this is a good way to try to figure that out. So here we've isolated exosomes from uh, HeLa cell culture media using our reagent, um, then isolated the RNA um, using our RNA kit, and then taken that RNA and made libraries using our ion torrent RNA-seq kit. Um, and then these samples were run on the ion torrent PGM, I believe a 316 chip. Um, and we compared that, so here you'll see on the right, um, it's a, if you can read that, it's EIR, which is the exosome fraction. And then on the left is the cell pellet. Um, so comparing the entire um, cell culture, looking at the cells versus the cell media. Um, and what you can see, um, there are kind of two things I want to point out with this slide. One is that the uh, pattern between the two different cell fractions is very different, um, as you would um, expect, but it's good to see that. And then second is that within the exosome, we were able to detect an array of different types of RNA, not just message and micro, but also um, snow, excuse me, snow RNA and non-coding RNA. So um, this is just a first look. I mean, of course, this needs much more work and development to really get an a, a in-depth picture of what's there. but. Um, it's a very promising start into the sequencing. Um, so as we move forward with exosomes, we have, you know, protocols and reagents for serum and cell culture media, but 
for exosome research, that has expanded out to many different sample types. Um, I've heard many talks focusing on urine and on plasma, as well as breast milk and CSF. So what we'd like to do next is to try to expand our offering out to those sample types. Because if any of you have worked with the different sample types, you know they are very different from each other and require more um, specialized protocols for each one. So here I just have data. Um, so this is nanosite data. I'm actually showing the concentration of um, the, uh, based on the nanosite, the concentrations of the exosome in the 30 to 150 nanometer range. Um, and here you can see there's plasma and then urine for multiple donors. Um, and what's interesting to see is the ultracentrifugation versus reagent, you see a large discrepancy in the recovery. Um, not um, unexpected um, because ultracentrifugation, you know, you can lose a lot of your sample, um, <coughs> whether through the loss of the pellet or compression forces in the, the um, sedimentation. Um, but similar for urine too. But really the most important thing is um, initial results show we can extract exosomes from these two different sample types. Um, and in addition, also from additional sample types, including breast milk, CSF, acetic fluid, saliva, and amniotic fluid. So initial results are very, are very uh, promising. Um, we're actually we're able to detect through the nanosite um, in ec particles in the exosome range. Um, and we hope to have um, new um, specific reagents and specific protocols for each of these body fluids um, out by August um, for people to use. So in addition to characterization of the surface of the exosome and the characterization of their cargo, um, there's also growing interest, and I've seen several um, good talks, um, very good talks um, here, um, focusing on labeling, tracking the exosomes in vivo, actually seeing where they go and seeing, you know, kind of where they're targeting, um, perhaps be able to use for delivery or just um, finding specific exosomes for, for specific tissues. Um, so what we've done is using um, two of our dyes, um, cytorna select, which targets the RNA inside the exosome, as well as the bodipi ceramide dye, which targets the lipid bilayer of the exosome. Um, we just did a very simple labeling reaction, um, combining the dye with the isolated exosomes. The exosomes are isolated from cell culture media, and um, labeled them with each of the dye, um, and then ran them through a uh, swing column to clean out any excess dye that wasn't bound. And what we found when you compare to the, lab the labeled exosomes versus a non-labeled control, as well as just the dye itself, you see a very strong signal um, compared to background. And these measurements were made with our qubit fluorometer, um, just looking at the excitation. Um, and as you can see, there's quite a big um, signal above background showing that def there was the exosomes had been labeled. And as you can see, there's no difference in the labeled exosomes, um, no significant difference between the labeled exosomes versus the exosome only. So it's not affecting its ability to be tracked on the nanosite. So we're very excited about this, but it's great if you're able to label them, but it's even better if you're able to take those labeled exosomes and use them in vivo. And that's what we looked at. Um, Next, so we took, um, again, exosomes isolated with reagent from HeLa cell culture media and then labeled them with the cyto-RNA select dye, fluorescent dye, um, incubated them, and then I call it transfer. It's not really transfection um, because it's, uh, the exosomes are just added back to HeLa cells in cell culture um, and let, left to incubate for them to assimilate the exosomes. And then after that, I think 30 minutes to three hours um, was about the time um, the cells were then fixed and stained, and we looked at them on a fluorescent microscope. And we also looked at using no dye added, just dye, and the dye labeled exosomes. So, um, and we looked at this with our Floyd um, fluorescent microscope imaging station. Um, the red dye is phylloidin, the blue, of course, is DAPI, and then the cytoselect is a green. So with no treatment, as you would expect, there was no, um, no green that you could see. Dye only, you did see some green, um, mostly in kind of broad patches. However, what we found most interesting is when you use the labeled exosomes, you actually saw these very bright points um, um, <coughs> indicating perhaps aggregations of the labeled exosome. So we were pretty excited to see this um, and to see that you could actually visualize the exosomes after labeling. Um, 
So in conclusion, um, we developed a set of reagents and a workflow to enable um, isolation of the exosomes, which then <coughs> follows through to a complete work throw, including characterization, um, and to do so in a fraction of the time that ultracentrifugation would take. Um, we've also optimized protocols to label the exosomes, as well as be able to visualize them in vivo in cells. Um, and our ultimate goal is to continue this. Um, I mentioned the additional body fluids, so to uh, complete um, the, the uh, excuse me development for those new protocols and reagents, and then a complete arsenal and tools, including also um, labeling um, labeling tools. Um, so I'd like to thank um, my group in Austin. Um,